her life to save her people. This is the story of Esther. Although it is a tradition to boo when you hear Haman's name, it's me! <laughs> I'm going to ask you not to boo so that everyone can hear all of the lines we have to say. King Ahasuerus ruled yeah. over a large kingdom and had his castle in the capital called Shushan. He was not a bad king because he let lots of different kinds of people live in his kingdom, and they were allowed to believe in their own god or gods. So there were some Jewish people in the kingdom who had been taken away from Israel about a hundred years earlier. King Ahasuerus wasn't a good king, though, because he didn't work hard to help take care of his people. He was more concerned with having great parties. Our story begins at the king's biggest party ever. He had visitors that he really wanted to impress, so he had his cooks prepare the best foods. They started with meat and steak with dressing. Everyone took a big plate and started to eat the yummy food. The king asked his guests what they thought of the food. Isn't this the best steak you've ever had? It's good, but it's not the best I've ever had. What? <laughs> the king was so upset. He really wanted to impress his guests. He hoped they'd be more impressed by the next course, pasta with butter. Everyone took a big bowl and started to eat. After a few bites, the king asked what they thought of the food. Isn't this the best pasta you've ever had? It's good, but it's not the best I've ever had. What? <laughs> Oh, the king was getting upset. Hopefully the dessert would impress them. Chocolate pizza with chocolate ice cream. Everyone took a plate and started to eat. And again, the king asked what they thought of that food. Isn't this the best dessert you've ever had? It's good, but it's not the best I've ever had. What? Oh, the king was upset. He hoped they'd be more impressed by his entertainment. So he called for his karate expert, Fantastic Jake. Nice. <laughs> Next, he called for his silly man, Clowny Clowny Natan. <laughs> <laughs> the king really wanted to impress his guests, and he knew that the best dancer in the kingdom was Queen Vashti, so he called for his messengers. Messengers went over to the queen's chambers and gave Vashti the message. Queen Vashti, the king wants you to dance for his guests. I'm not coming. I'm painting the Mona Lisa. <laughs> the messengers were shocked that she said no, but they went back to give the king the message. She won't come. What? <laughs> the king was angry and he told the messengers, if she won't dance, she won't be the queen. If she won't dance, and they stomped back and gave her the message. If you won't come, you won't be the queen. I'm not coming, I'm painting the Mona Lisa. <laughs> the messengers couldn't believe it, they were so shocked. And again, they went back to give the king the message. She won't come. <laughs> this time, the king was so angry, he told them to, to arrest Vashti and banish her from the kingdom. Arrest Vashti and banish her. They stomped over, they took her Mona Lisa away, they took the crown off of her head, and they banished her from the kingdom. The messengers went back to their place in the castle, and the party actually continued for several more days and nights, until finally it was over. The king's guests went back to their homes in the village, and the entertainers went back to their homes in the village. And Madeline is no longer going to be Queen Vashti, now she's going to be a person in the village also. <laughs> <laughs> 
After a few days, the king was lonely, and he realized he needed to choose a new queen. He called for his messengers. Messengers! <laughs> And the messengers went out to make the announcement in the village. They called out, everyone listen. Everyone listen. They told them that the king is having a contest to find a new queen. The king is, the king is having a contest to find a new queen. And then they said that all smart, talented, beautiful women should come to the castle. All smart, talented, beautiful women should go to the castle. The messengers went back to their part of the castle, and one Jewish man in the village named Mordechai heard the announcement, and he rushed over to his house to tell his cousin Esther. Esther, there is going to be a contest to find a new queen. Wow! <laughs> Mordechai told Esther she should go to the castle. You should go to the castle. Okay. And then he warned her, but don't tell anyone you're Jewish. But don't tell anyone you're Jewish. Okay. So Mordechai went back to his home in the village, and Esther joined many other smart, talented, beautiful women at the castle. The king went to go and meet each woman to find out more about her. You look smart and beautiful. What can you do? I can train any unicorn. Let me see. Jump, unicorn. <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> got to have her own fancy clothes, and she got to eventually have her own crown, <laughs> and she enjoyed her life in the castle. She also learned a very important rule, never go in to see the king unless you are invited under penalty of death. Mordechai was on his way to work at the castle one day when he overheard the king's advisor and cook planning to kill him. Let's kill the king! Let's put poison in his food. Let's, let's do it tonight! And they left. <laughs> 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 Mordecai was shocked and he rushed into the castle and was immediately able to see the king. King, your advisor and cook are trying to kill you tonight. What? Of course the king was upset, but before anything else, he called for his messengers. He asked them to write Mordecai's name in the book of good deeds. Write down Mordecai's name in the book of good deeds. After they wrote Mordecai's name, Mordecai went back to his home in the village. And then he told the <laughs> messengers to arrest his cook and his advisor. Arrest the cook and the advisor. They stomped over to arrest the bad guys, and they banished them from the kingdom forever. The messengers went back to their home in the castle. You mean that home? Their place in the castle. <laughs> and then the king realized he needed to choose a new advisor. This time he chose Haman. I choose Haman! Yay! 
Amon was very excited to let everyone know how important he was, so he stomped out to the village where everyone was standing around. He yelled out to them, I am the king's advisor. I am the king's advisor. And then ordered them, bow down to me. Bow down to me. He looked over and saw that Mordechai didn't bow, and he yelled at him, why won't you bow to me? Why won't you bow to me? I am Jewish. I won't bow down to people. He explained, I'll only bow down for God. I only bow down to God. Haman shook his fist at Mordechai and yelled, I'll get you for this. I'll get you for this. Haman stomped back to the castle, and the people in the village finally relaxed. Haman was so angry, he didn't decide just to get revenge on Mordechai. He thought he would get rid of all of the Jewish people in the kingdom. He wrote a new law that the Jewish people would be killed, and he drew lots, pouring, which gives us the name of the holiday, to pick the date. He yelled out, the Jews will be killed. The Jews will be killed on the 13th of the dark. And laughed an evil laugh. <laughs> he put away the lots and then wrote the law onto a piece of paper and took it in for the king to sign. The king didn't even read it. He just wrote his name on it. He was busy thinking about a party. And then he called for his messengers. <laughs> Yes, my king. Announce the new law in the village. The messengers went out into the village and screamed out, Everyone listen. Everyone listen. The Jews will be killed on the 13th of Adar. The people in the village were shocked. And the messengers went back to their, home, their place in the castle. <laughs> Mordechai heard that new law, and he rushed to the castle to speak to Esther. Esther. Jews will be killed on the 13th of Adar. That's terrible. Mordechai told Esther, you, you must, must go, go speak to the king. But I would be killed. You must. To save you the Jewish people. To save the Jewish people. <laughs> I, I'll try. Mordechai went back to his home in the village, and Esther fasted and prayed for three days to try to work up the courage to go and speak to the king even though she knew that doing so without being invited could mean her death. Finally, she felt ready, and she went in to see the king. Of course, the king was angry, and he yelled out, Who dares bother the king? Who dares bother the king? And he even yelled out, Who will be put to death? Who will be put to death? It's me, Queen Esther. Please don't kill me. The king looked at Esther, and instead of getting angry, he said, Esther, I'll give you anything you want. Esther I'll give you anything you want. Esther was so relieved. Then she invited the king to a party at her chambers tomorrow. Please come to a party at my chambers tomorrow. And, and she even said, please bring Haman. And please bring Haman. Yay! Okay, we'll come. Esther went back to her part of the castle to start to prepare for the party. She started cooking fancy foods and chopping things up, knowing how much the king liked that kind of thing. That night at the castle, everyone was asleep, except the king. He was having a really tough time sleeping. <laughs> Maybe it was his crown. <laughs> Finally, the king gave up, and he called for his messengers. Messengers! Even though they were tired, they had to go yes, and Yes, my king! He told Read the messengers... Read me from the book of good deeds. Mordecai saved the king's life. What was his reward? He wasn't rewarded. The king thought about that for a little while, and the messengers went back to their place. The king couldn't think of a good reward. He needed some advice. He called for his advisor, Haman. Advisor! Yes, king. The king what asked, should I do for a man I wish to honor? Haman was excited. It's for me! <laughs> so he thought up a wonderful reward. He told the king to dress the man in his best clothes. Dress the man in, the, in your best clothes. And have him ride your best horse. And have him ride your best horse. And have someone yell out, this is a great man. And have somebody yell out, this is a great man. The king
king said, that's a great plan. That's a great plan. And Haman was even more excited. Yay! <laughs> until the king said, do these things for Mordecai. Do these things for Mordecai. What? But Haman had no choice. He had to listen to what the king said. He stomped over to the village. <coughs> And he led Mordecai around, calling out, This is a great man. This is a great man. Until finally they went back to Mordecai's home in the village, and Haman stomped back to the castle. <laughs> At least Haman didn't have to be angry for too long, because that night was the party in Esther's chambers. The king told him, Let's go to the party. Let's go to the party. And they okay. walked over to Esther's chambers. They started to eat all of the delicious food that Esther had prepared. And after a while, the king, so happy with the party, told Esther again, I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything for you. Even if somebody tried to kill me? <laughs> what? Who is it? I'll get him. It's Hamon. In fact, he wants to kill all the Jewish people in the kingdom. And she finally told the king the truth. I'm Jewish. The king was surprised, and he looked at Esther, and then he looked at Haman, <laughs> and he called for his messengers. Messengers! Yes, my king! Arrest Haman and banish him from the kingdom. They grabbed Haman, and they took him away forever. <laughs> The messengers went back to their place in the castle, and again the king needed to pick a new advisor. This time he picked Mordecai. I picked Mordecai. With Mordecai and Esther's help, he became a better king. He learned to care more about his people and worry a little bit less about having fancy parties. Mordecai and Esther also passed a new law that all the Jewish people in the kingdom should remember how they were going to be killed and how Haman had drawn lots, Purim. And instead, they were saved. So they said that we should always tell the story and sing wonderful songs. So now I'm going to ask the kindergartners to take off their crowns or their hats and take your place on the line so we can sing a few Purim songs.